Quantizing. Do you do it or not? Sometimes you want to retain feel and performance, and other times you need absolute accuracy. I'll show you how I make that determination in my music. Let's do it. To some people, quantizing is the enemy of music. I call those people jazz musicians. Seriously, if you're playing jazz, blues, swing, some types of rock, yeah, it is the enemy. And it's also the enemy for whatever type of music I just left off that list and you're about to message me about. Don't worry, I know. But film music is a mixed bag of techniques and needs. There's no one solution that can fit every single problem. So why don't I start by showing you the things I don't quantize. Every once in a great while, I accidentally hit the keys that I want and the order I want and the right speed and the right velocity, and I want to keep that performance. Now, usually it's a solo piano thing, or in the case of someone dying, it'd be a solo oboe, or in the case of someone dying overseas, a solo ethnic flute, or it's a crazy drum fill when all hell's breaking loose. But in those instances, I don't quantize it because I want to keep the, either the fluidity or the chaos of that solo moment. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I don't have the lightest of touches when it comes to playing keyboard. So even when I get something I like, I usually have to tweak it a little bit to smooth out the performance. And one of those ways is the use of iterative quantize or soft quantize. A digital performer in Logic uh, call it uh, quantize strength. Basically what you're doing is you're telling the DAW how far you want to move the note from where it was played to where the beat is. It's not making it perfect, but it's making it better. So if my playing is a little sloppy and I don't want absolute mechanical reproduction, I use this. Let me show you. Look at this short percussion part here. Now, I could take this and quantize it directly to the beat. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but let's say I wanted it to be a little looser. Let me zoom in so you can really see the effects here. I'm gonna take just these first four, and we're gonna use soft quantize right here, right? Now, each time I click Q, it's going to get a little bit closer to the beat, but not all the way. See? Each time, it's a little bit tighter. And I can just hit Shift Q and undo it. Of course, this is Cubase specific that I'm giving you right here. But again, uh, in Logic and DP, you're looking at quantized strength. Uh, and you can set those things right here in a quantized panel. I can say mode quantize strength right there soft quantize strength 25 percent i can set it to 50 if i want same kind of thing up, 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 up. so every time it gets a little bit closer so let's take that whole percussion line again and quantize at 50 percent Okay, so that's not gonna mean much out of context. So let me show it to you with just some other percussion and then with a few other instruments so you feel how it all fits together. You'll see that it's like tight without being mechanical, but it's real without feeling sloppy. Let's give it a shot. Here's the percussion first. So you can hear the realism in there. It feels like a real performance. Let me show it to you with everything. Now, if I put in short strings into this, you're gonna see how uh, you start hearing uh, where there's rubs against a, a quantized performance of the strings and then a only mildly quantized performance of the percussion. Now, obviously I took out some other elements there so you could just hear the shorts, but that gives you a sense of, of how uh, iterative quantize or soft quantize can get you a tight performance without making it mechanical. Now, a good rule of thumb is the more instruments that are playing together, the tighter each performance has to be to sound cohesive. If you've got three sections all playing the same rhythm, or if you've got synth arps and pulses playing against short strings and short brass, well, the timing becomes really important. If you've just got piano arpeggios over long chords and strings, well, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to sound like you're not a first year piano student. But remember, you can help more than just the timing. 
you can help the velocity as well. Think of it like quantizing vertically. Okay, look at this short mess of notes here. Velocities are pretty dynamic. Overall, the performance is a little too heavy handed, not surprising there. Now, I'm showing this in Cubase. Other DAWs are gonna have similar controls as well. Now, besides the obvious feature of being able to raise and lower the velocities like this, you can also scale velocities. This is more compressed here, or you can scale them up and make them more dynamic. Cubase also gives you features like this where you can compress them around a central value. It goes even further where you can actually compress them more as time goes on. You can slant and do all kinds of crazy stuff. But in this case, what I want to do is just compress the overall performance so it's not quite so wild. And then pull the velocities back a little bit. Now this was originally, obviously, the performance is even worse and I just used iterative to bring it a little bit closer. Compared to the original. Now I could go into really great detail about all the features Cubase has when it comes to velocity and how to tweak it, but I wanna keep things moving, so let's do that. Okay, hyper-quantized MIDI isn't just the realm of electronic music and dance music. It absolutely has a place in orchestral music as well. See, a musical sounding performance isn't always just about velocity and timing. A lot of instruments rely on mod, volume, expression, and a host of other CCs to create that, you know, illusion of reality. Now, in the case of a legato melody line as part of a larger arrangement, I'd rather the timing be absolutely flawless because that allows me to focus on the expressiveness of each note. And also, that's how sections play. They play together and in time. So once I get the notes in the way I want, I've got a couple of options. I can adjust and polish the existing CCs, right? Or I can delete those CCs and just re-perform without having to play any notes. Only one thing to think of at a time and I can overdub. Let's say I want to adjust the vibrato on this performance. So I think it's pretty clear that the uh, expressiveness came from the controllers and not from the timing there. Um, and for a lot of legato instruments, they do actually use the velocity to trigger things like portamento or a slow and fast legato speed. So just something to be aware of there. Uh, but the biggest amount of the expressiveness is in the controllers. So this is a place where you can quantize everything. Now there's something to keep in mind when working with quantized samples and that's latency. See, samples will play behind the beat unless you compensate for that. Let me show you what I mean. Check out this short passage and I have not compensated for the latency in the sample. Okay, so it's behind the beat. Why is that? Well, the sound of an instrument, of an organic one anyway, is much more than just the note itself. It's what my friend Gary Lewenberger calls the schmutz. It's that imperceptible sound of like a bow touching on a string of a violin or the sound of wind blowing into an instrument or a guitar pick touching the string. It's that little thing that makes it sound alive. By the way, for those of you that don't know, Gary's one of the guys that designed the sounds for the original DX7. He also designed the marimba sound for Toto's Africa. That little thing that made the sound what it was, that's the schmutz. So how do we compensate for that lag? Track pre-delay or some people call it negative track delay. Now, I could do a whole video on that stuff as well, and in the interest, again, of trying to keep these videos from getting too long, I'm gonna say this. There's a video by a guy named David Kudel who covers this stuff pretty well. Um, he talks about quantizing and using track uh, pre-delay or track negative delay. Um, I do have one quibble. He does recommend quantizing and then using randomization or humanization to get things to sound a little more live again. I do not like that technique, and that's because real live performances are not random at all. Percussionists lay behind the beat or get in front of the beat in, in a somewhat predictable way. It's not random, it's just not perfect. Um, so that's just my little thing. I prefer iterative quantize for that kind of stuff where you're just trying to make the performance a little bit better 
but you're keeping that feel. All right, why don't we look at some short strings up against synths, and this is without any pre-delay or negative track delay. Now you can hear how sloppy that sounds. So how do we fix that problem? Well, it's easy. You gotta tell the sequencer to play the note early. Get the schmutz out of the way so you perceive the note on the beat. This is what negative track delay is. It just tells the sequencer, play the note early. Rather than physically moving the note, you just tell the sequencer to do it. Uh, in general, legato notes need a lot of negative track delay. Uh, short notes need less. Percussion needs almost nothing. Um, let me show you where it is up here. So if we click on a track like this one here, legato violins, right? Up in the corner, you see this little clock is left and right, and you can set a value here. That's milliseconds. It basically plays the note 80 milliseconds before where it is in the MIDI, and then you perceive it at the right spot. This compensates for not just the lag in the sample, but also in this case, the lag in legatos. So what we can do is just adjust the negative track delay for the spiccato violins and also for the ensemble short strings. And let's hear that back. Okay, so obviously that sounds better, sounds more cohesive. So just remember, if you're gonna quantize your samples, you've gotta compensate for that lag with the negative track delay, as I have here. Okay, here's the take home message. Use your ears. Think about the context of the piece you're writing or the context of the scene you're working in. Think about the instrument and its capabilities, whether it's a solo instrument or a whole group of people playing it. You know, like a lot of what I do, there's not one answer for this problem. Some people will tell you it's quantize everything or quantize nothing. It's not, it's a continuum. See, I purposefully try to reinvent my workflow from time to time because I think it's a valuable exercise and you learn something new every single time. So don't be afraid to clear the decks and start from scratch. We'll do more next time. I'll see you guys later.